200 Kenyan security officers arrived in Haiti this week. They are part of a contingent of international police forces sent to quell gang violence and restore democratic rule in the Caribbean nation. At the same time, protests over proposed tax increases in Kenya turned violent as demonstrators stormed the parliament building and clashes with police turned deadly. VOA Nairobi Bureau Chief Maria Madialo reports that the conference of events has led some in Kenya to wonder how the government can restore peace to another country while troubles are brewing at home. Kenyan police officers arrived in Haiti Tuesday on a mission to help restore order in the troubled Caribbean nation. Meanwhile, protests over proposed tax increases that have rocked Kenya over the last two weeks resumed. Several people were shot dead outside Kenya's parliament as police clashed with protesters who stormed the complex after lawmakers passed the highly controversial tax hikes. Some of the protesters, like Denish, questioned the point of sending police to Haiti when there is such unrest in Kenya. They went yesterday at Haiti, but it's uh, so ironical that back at home here, uh, we don't have peace. The police themselves are fighting us with the common Wananchi. But again, we've taken our police to go to Haiti to fight people from other nationality. Well, at home, we are not at peace. Kelvin Moses was not a protester Tuesday, but he echoes those views. For me, it's a double-edged sword because uh, you cannot be taking troops out of the, out of the country while, while the same country is uh, facing instability, you know. So it is like uh, you are trying to help your, your neighbor whereas your house is on fire. Speaking at a send-off ceremony earlier this week, Kenyan President William Ruto told police officers departing for Haiti their mission will help lasting peace return to the conflict-ravaged country. This mission is one of the most urgent, important and historic in the history of global solidarity. It is a mission to affirm the universal values of community of nations and a mission to take a stand for humanity. Last year, a United Nations Security Council resolution approved the Kenyan-led mission to help tackle violence and restore peace in the mostly gang-controlled nation. But earlier this year, the High Court of Kenya ruled against the deployment, saying it was unconstitutional. Issues cited by the court include the lack of a reciprocal agreement between the countries. The Kenyan government eventually secured that agreement, but the same people who sued the government recently filed another lawsuit seeking to block the deployment. The high court has yet to make a ruling. Javas Bigambo is a Kenyan lawyer and governance consultant. In the event that this issue is settled as unconstitutional again, what then will befall uh, the Kenyan government, especially on the part of the executive, the issue of security officers being deep in mission in Haiti and perhaps uh, being demanded that they be recalled back to base, back to the country. Bigambo tells VOA while this mission puts Kenya on the global map as player in international peacekeeping, all Kenyan eyes will be on Haiti to see whether the police are making a difference. Mariama Jalu, VOA News, Nairobi. Traders in Tanzania's commercial city of Dar es Salaam are continuing with their strike, with the movement now expanding to other parts of city and across different regions of the country. The strike, which started in Dar es Salaam's Kariyako on Monday, a popular market area in the country and one of the busiest in East Africa, stems from traders' dissatisfactions with the multiple taxes and collections methods executed by the Tanzania Revenue Authority. The strike has spread to the regions of Mbeya, Arusha, Dodoma, Mwanza, Songwe, Mutwara, Geita, and Ilinga as it entered its third day with traders pressuring the government to address their concerns. Even though it was initial local media reports stated that the strike announcement was a hoax, it later turned out to be reality on Monday when most of the shops in Kariyako were closed. While the strike continues to spread, the government said on Wednesday that it was working on the concerns of traders, noting, however, that implementing all that implementing all of them immediately would have far-reaching ramifications on the executions of some national development projects. 
The reaction by the finance minister, Dr. Muigulu Chemba, as delivered in parliament comes at a time when the traders' strike ended its third day on Wednesday. Dr. Chamber told the parliament that implementing a constant reduce the value added tax from 18% to 12% would result in a revenue shortfall for of Tanzanian shillings 600 billion at once, hence affecting the execution of the ongoing mega project. Traders want the government to put all taxes within a single collection basket, while the fines imposed on them whenever they go contrary to business norms must also be reduced to the level of traffic offenses. They also claim that the issuance of receipts should not be considered another tax because, to them, they are just like a new form of harassment. They want TRA to stop a tendency to seize their goods and eat TRA's tendency to refuse to accept traders' financial statements that have been prepared by the registered accounting professionals. But Dr. Chamber said the government was working on the concerns, but it needs time to find alternative revenue sources to fill the budget gap that would be left by the removal or reduction of some of the taxes as proposed by the traders. In the city of Arusha, some traders also closed their shops for two hours before deciding to open them, claiming that they were waiting for the response of their leaders who went to Dodoma to negotiate with the government. However, they have said that they will join the businesses, the businessmen of other regions, to continue the strike if the meeting of their leaders and the government do not respond to the arguments they presented.